top story tonight a nation is in shock after witnessing what is supposed to happen actually happen a guy who committed crimes got arrested the former president pled not guilty to 34 charges related to hush money payments that he's converted into a massive fundraising hall marking the first time a trump investment actually made a profit after returning home to his pissed off wife and bed bugs trump said this and this is where we are right now i have a trump hating judge with a Trump-hating wife and family whose daughter worked for Kamala Harris. Trump there laying the groundwork for his insanity plea by openly threatening the judge and his family. Meanwhile, Republicans are not contesting Trump's guilt, despite the wholly unrealistic premise that Trump is comfortable removing his clothes and instead downplaying the charges as politically motivated. People view this as a political persecution. Purely politically motivated. Political tyranny part of anarcho tyranny. A disgusting political hit job. Political vengeance. Political persecution. Political prisoner. Political persecution. This is just political. Political witch hunt. Yes, Republicans are right. Wielding the law against an individual for political gain is an outrage, but it's totally chill when you do it against millions of people. Republicans in Florida are looking to restrict voter access. After voters approved an amendment restoring voting rights to most felons, state Republicans enacted new restrictions. Labor unions are being undercut in uh, Iowa. We've seen right to work bills pass in Kentucky and Missouri, and New Hampshire's coming next. In their defense, at least all those people who suffered generational trauma from that weaponization didn't have to share a three-hour flight with Eric Trump. Joining me now to drive a convertible to Headlines Valley, drink red facts at a truth vineyard, and get in a blowout fight when Sarah drunkenly admits she slept with your ex-scoop, is Democratic strategist who has a recurring nightmare where Pete Buttigieg points out a typo on her resume, Lydia Parker. Good evening. Chief Washington Bureau Chief and sneezy guy at the orgy, Jonathan Keene. Hello. Chief Field Correspondent who music teachers instinctively handed the triangle, James Smartwood Jr. Hey, Dad. And New York Times columnist and tuning out contributor who is the existential opposite of Las Vegas, Nevada, Charles Blow. Thank you for being here, Charles. Thank you for having me. Charles, please tell us the tale of the time when dragons and griffins roamed the earth and the law was not used as a political weapon. <laughs> well, I, you know, it's very interesting to hear everyone screaming now about whether or not this is a political prosecution. You know, politic politicians and the law are completely intertwined in all of this, so it's impossible to, to kind of extricate the two or separate the two from each other. Uh, if President Trump mm -hmm. regains the, the, the presidency, you know, God forbid, he would then be in charge of the Justice Department. Uh, Alvin Bragg has Department. to run a political campaign to get the office that he now holds that allows him to do this. So that is separate from the fact of whether or not this man committed crimes or not. And all of the people who are defending him are saying that, th that, that this case is slim or that it is used a novel uh, approach to, the, to this particular charge. None of them are saying that he didn't do these things, which are crimes mm -hmm. in New York. It's fair for MAGA Republicans to compare Trump's political persecution to that of Nelson Mandela. Long Walk to Freedom was about how he cheated on his wife, Melania Mandela. Well, if this is how it's going to go, I guess there's no point in my becoming a billionaire, so forget it. Yeah. I was going to do it. You know, Trump's followers once chanted, lock her up, and now their guy might actually get locked up. The irony is delicious. Cool. <clears throat> Not to... Uh, belabor this, what? but how delicious is the irony? Uh, it's fine, I guess. I mean, it's... Well, why can't you admit it's hmm. delicious? Why are you withholding? Wh what do you... Keen, what do you need me to say for you to stop doing this? I need you to say the irony is delicious. And, and what if I don't? You know, James, if you could just reach out and taste some of this irony it's and tell just, me whether you think it's delicious it's or not. It's just a truism. It's not even the he's in Mar-a-Lago right now. It's not even this he's not even locked up. But were James, he to James, be locked up? Right. Delicious? Just say it. It's not worth all this. Pretend it's a sandwich and say it's delicious. The irony is delicious. There you go. Okay. Is everyone happy? <laughs> All right. Yes. I'm, no, I'm I take it back sober. after that celebration. Damn it. Now, Charles, you blew your shot at a Trump cabinet appointment. When you wrote in the New York Times about the Trump case, the eyes of the country are on these cases, the eyes of all those who've been badgered for minor violations, who've had the book thrown at them for crimes that others either got away with or served no time for. That prompted the former president to retreat to his study, 
gather his thoughts, then vomit onto his white supremacist beehive truth social. Racist columnist Charles Blowhard of the failing New York Times, a sick degenerate who doesn't like our country or the values that made it great, prior to its massive failure over the last two years, writes that I should be prosecuted by radical left Soros-backed lunatics, even without evidence, because I'm white. Charles, Trump's voters are ferocious consumers of the New York Times op-ed page. Are you concerned this will hurt your readership? <laughs> not at all. I'm not concerned with his whiteness as it relates to this particular charge. I'm uh, concerned with his wrongness as it relates to this charge. And if, if he has committed a crime, he deserves to be pr prosecuted just like any other person would. America has a chance that to, right now to live up to the ideals that it has crafted for itself. It can live up to them or it can fall uh, short of them. And this is a test for the country. We have to see if America is w willing to or able to pass that test. Don't take it personally, Charles. I'm certain Trump saw the blowhard nickname opportunity and worked his way backward to reading the op-ed from there. Certainly possible. Now, for more on how the Trump indictment affects the race for the 2024 Republican nomination, let's go to Junior, who is at Mar-a-Lago. Junior, what can you report? Uh, my ears popped on the flight down here, so. Okay, sorry to hear that, but what can you report on how other candidates are reacting to this indictment? Oh, despite running against him, they are all coming to his defense. While Nikki Haley is offering to serve any possible sentence undergoing facial reconstruction surgery to look more like Donald Trump. Wow, looks uncanny there. Now, how about Mike Pence? Pence is claiming it was actually him, not Trump, who had an affair with Stormy Daniels, mm. insisting his sex drive is insatiable and proudly wearing a cod piece. Karen cannot be happy about that. Quite the contrary. Now, DeSantis and Trump have become rivals. Is Florida's governor coming to Trump's defense? Well, he sure is. He's distracting authorities, keeping an eye on Trump by hijacking an 18-wheeler and running down Goofy. Okay, I'm cheering for Goofy in that one.